When you record a macro in Excel, behind the scenes, Excel has written the Visual Basic for you and saved it away in the Visual Basic editor under the correct command name. So if we want to edit an existing macro, we need to visit the Visual Basic for that macro. So if we take the My First Macro file and we want to see the code behind this macro, we know it works, so we can click in a cell, go to Macros and run this command name today. And hey presto, it puts my name and today's date. To see the code behind it, we go to the Visual Basic Editor, which we can access from the Developer ribbon, or through Alt F11. That will also bring up the Visual Basic window. Now you'll find that we will have a little tour of the Visual Basic window and where everything sits. But the code for your macro sits within Module 1, which is here, and actually open within your workbook. So my first macro workbook. All your code sits between sub and n sub, sub standing for subroutine. This is the name of our macro, command name today. These little bits with the green are comments, and effectively they are the comments that were created when you added a description, when you record the macro, and you can see the keyboard shortcut is listed there as well. And then we hit the VBA. Now at this stage, before we get into actually editing the VBA and writing our own VBA, you can still do minimal changes to the macro. For example, I can see here that it's going to write into the active cell, Guy Vaccaro. Well, I could perhaps change that so that it writes my full name, Gaetano Richard Vaccaro. We have it putting today as the function. If I change that today to now, I will get the date and time. And then the rest, we can see it does copy, paste special, moves to the cell above, makes the selection go bold. So that's where it's making my text go bold. Font size goes to 12, well, let's change that to 14. So I've made a few changes within the VBA, effectively not really knowing what's going on, but by spotting, using a bit of logic. So I can see my name, so I've made a change there. I can see the function, so I've made a change. I can see the bold, and I can see the size, so I've changed the size upwards. So if we now go back to our Excel sheet, which we can do here, the little Excel symbol, choose a new cell, go to Macros, Command name today and run. You'll see that it now uses my full name, puts today's date and time, and I edited those changes myself in the macro. So even before we get into writing our own code and developing the code, you can still edit existing macros by going to the Visual Basic Editor, finding your particular macro in module one. Now there could be more than one. At the minute there's only one, so it's easy to find, but you're looking for the name here, which is the name we gave the macro. And then you look through the code to see which bits you could change without breaking anything. And usually anything within speech marks is what it will put in a cell. So that's easy to change. That's straightforward text. That's the function that goes in. And here I've seen font size. Well, I understand font and size. So I can change that to a different size. I changed it to 14. It was 12. So we're still able to make a few of those changes. And we can soon flick back to Excel to see if that works. Run the macro again or Visual Basic Editor to make changes to the macro. Now you can get to this particular macro directly by going to the macro list, choosing the macro and choosing edit. And you'll see it brings you into exactly the same place. The difference being if you had a number of macros, the cursor would be flashing here below the correct subroutine. So if you've got a number, that's probably a better way of going in because it will drop you into the right macro. Whereas if you know the name of the macro you're looking for, you can go straight into the Visual Basic Editor from this icon here on the developer ribbon.